I think one of the major points in my book is that this is not just a state-to-state -state relationship the United States and China has. It's a society-to-society -society relationship. And therefore, while politicians and foreign policy people in both countries had their state objectives, there were myriad interest groups in both societies that had their interests and their objectives and their values. And so this relationship to be properly managed can't just be managed at the state to state level, but it has to take into account all these different economic, social groups that have become invested in various ways in the relationship. And my career is just involved dealing with government, uh, academic organizations, non-governmental organizations, states as well in the United States as well as the federal government. So I've just happened through happenstance in my career to see this relationship in, its, in a, a greater totality of society to society and not just as a government to government relationship. I think that is to humanize the relationship really. I've been involved with many different organizations over time. I'm most extensively involved with the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations. And just for example, uh, this relationship between the United States and China in 1971 and 72 involved ping pong teams and sports. And initially, our relationship moved forward with gymnasts and martial artists and so on. And the National Committee ran many programs where uh, we introduced segments of Chinese society to American society and go in the initial days of Nixon you operated with Nixon and Kissinger at one level but then it was non-governmental organizations and the Philadelphia Orchestra and the Wushu group from China and the ping pong teams and so on it only then gradually moved into a deeper and deeper government to government kind of discussion so I would say the early days of normalization in the 70s and 80s was dominated by, in a way, the non-government. The governments had to permit this all to occur, but it was society driving it. And uh, you had volunteers that would host ch visiting Chinese sports figures in their homes. They'd learn about uh, small town America. Even Xi Jinping uh, spent time living in a home in Iowa. And uh, that became very important to his understanding of the United States when he became a national leader. So I think uh, this is a, a, what you might call a strategically important relationship that was nurtured and developed by, uh, substantially by the non-governmental sector. I think one of the things that's very important to the development of, of the, our relationship has been the academic exchange relationship. And I see, unfortunately, that's in some degree of peril uh, now from a number of sources. I, I came to, I think, have a, a rounded understanding of China because I was introduced to Chinese people in the countryside. I lived in Wuhan in 1982 when there weren't many foreigners and went all over looking at dam projects. I began to, I think, understand how Chinese people look at their own life and relations with the rest of the world and so forth. I think one of the big things we could do to improve things would be to make sure that the young people coming into our field, China studies, understand China from the ground up, from the inside out, not just from the external. Uh, and uh, there are many reasons for this. this some of this has to do with funding from the feder our federal government. Some has to do with Chinese concerns about having foreigners wandering around in, in villages or in uh, uh, localities and so forth. So I think one of the big problems has been the rising distrust and security concerns that each side has. I think it's, sh to me, shocking that we only have 350 American students and scholars about studying in China at any one time. And many of them don't spend that much time, even if they're living for two, three, six months. It's not a year or two years or three years. So we need to, I think, train a group of people that have instinct, have a feeling for the texture of China, 
And you only get that by living in China and dealing with Chinese people in a fairly unconstrained way. So this is actually my biggest fear in long term. The other part of the picture that's deteriorated has been our business community. It used to be the bulk work, I would say, politically in the United States of productive U.S.-China relations. So I think if I could do, made, wave a magic wand and try to improve two dimensions would be the exposure that our young people have to each other's society, particularly Americans to China, and the business community re-engage.